Is it true that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, married a nine-year-old girl? Now, the question stems from authentic hadiths or reports uh, that I, young Aisha, radiallahu anha, she married when she was six or seven years old and that the marriage was consummated when she was nine years of age. How do we as Muslims respond? How do Muslims respond? One Muslim is quoted as saying, my prophet was a gentleman and he did not marry an innocent seven or six year old or a nine year old girl. Now Muslims also respond by saying there are reports suggesting that the prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him married uh, Aisha radiallahu anha when she was six and consummated the marriage at nine. However, there are other evidences to support the fact that she may have been older. Now, while for many Muslims this would have been once enough of a response, there's now an expectation or demand that you clarify which of the two positions you take. Do you believe that Aisha, when she married the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was uh, nine years old or six years old, or was she older? Was she in her teens or her late teens, as some Muslims, you know, suggest? Now, while evidence put forward to support the position that Aisha may have been older when she married may deserve attention, there is no documented report stating that she was older. But there are reports, authentic hadiths, that do clearly state that she was six or seven years old when she married and nine years old when she consummated the marriage. My response and my position this evening, at this presentation tonight, is simply to say it how it is, how it was reported. And that is, yes, according to hadiths, Aisha radiallahu anha did marry at age six or seven. She did consummate the marriage at age nine. And she did remain in this marriage until she was widowed for nine years. Am I disturbed by this? Should Muslims overall be disturbed by this? Was it wrong? Was the marriage of Aisha wrong? Was the marriage of young Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, at age six in the Arabian Peninsula 1400 years ago, was it wrong at that time, at that place? History tells us, no. In its historical context, it was not wrong. How do we know this? Aisha was married at age six. She remained we're living with her uh, parents uh, for three years until the age of nine, at which point, yes, the marriage was then consummated with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, when it was socially and morally considered acceptable by all concerned. That included her parents, that included the community around her, that included Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad's worst enemies who were ready to assassinate him, but did not see any reason to attack him on this particular marriage or union. And there was every opportunity for young Aisha to seek refuge with those enemies who would have given her immediate refuge against this marriage, but she didn't choose to do so. And it was never the case that she ever complained of it, even in her older widowed years. The bond between Abu Bakr and the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was already solid. You know, this is one of the reasons Abu Bakr, uh, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, he hesitated in accepting the marriage proposal via this woman, uh, Khawla uh, bin Takim, um, with the Prophet Muhammad. He said, because we're, we're brothers. But the Prophet Muhammad clarified, he said, no, we're not brothers in blood. You know, we're just brothers as in, you know, hey, bro, you know, we're friends. You know, we're close. We're that close. We're like brothers. So the bond was already there. So, I mean, whatever. The, the claim that chapter 65, verse 4 of the Quran, in conjunction with other verses, um, it stated that, you know, I'll, I'll actually quote David Wood on this. He writes, if Islam allows a man to divorce a girl, 
who isn't old enough to have her period, it follows that Islam allows a man to marry a girl who hasn't reached menses. Now notice David Wood is quite smart, I would say, in not saying a girl who hasn't reached puberty. Why? Because it is what it is. In the Quran, in that verse, it simply refers to menstruation. It simply refers to the term menstruation. It doesn't say that a, a, a girl who has not reached puberty is eligible. It doesn't even implicitly say that. She is eligible to engage sexually with a man or consummate her marriage. Yes, according, if you were looking at this verse at face value, yes. And according to the commentaries that go with this verse, a girl can marry, as did Aisha, at age six, having not menstruated or having not gone through puberty. And she can sexually engage, having not menstruated. But can she sexually engage, having not completed puberty? No. There's a difference between the terms puberty and menstruation. The two are not synonymous in this respect. There is nothing in the Quran or Islam to prohibit marriage, marriage to those who have not yet menstruated, yet it would be disingenuous, inaccurate and dishonest to say that the Quran or other Islamic sources endorse consummation of marriage or sex with prepubescent girls. Remember, not premenstrual girls, prepubescent girls. And we know puberty does not require menstruation to be complete. Aisha narrated, the Prophet said, it is essential to have the consent of a virgin. Aisha said, what if the virgin feels shy? The Prophet said, her silence then means her consent. Now, it's important to note that the Prophet Muhammad clearly states the importance of obtaining consent. A girl should make it known when consent is not being given. It doesn't mean that if she's silent, you know, that's it, that's her consent. Yes, if she remains silent, that is her consent. But the emphasis is she should voice her opposition. She should, you know, make it known. A woman's silence can be damaging. Even in a court of law today in the secular world, in cases of rape, you know, that we always hear cases where they say, well, she didn't say anything. I went ahead. The man says she didn't say anything. She didn't, she didn't object. So this is where it's being made clear. Silence is taken as consent. Make it clear, make it known. This is what Islam is saying. The fact that Aisha is witnessing and narrating this hadith is also very important because this confirms that Aisha herself was made aware of her own right after her marriage, after the fact that she is now married with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, of her right to also annul her marriage, just like this girl. Some may argue, well, maybe she'd be too scared, too frightened to do so, or to challenge the authority of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Why, couldn't, why, wouldn't, she, why wouldn't she be able to challenge it? There were, again, there were many enemies of the Prophet who would gladly give her refuge and fight the Prophet for her right and challenge him against his own word of annulling this other young girl's marriage. So, you know, it could be challenged. The Prophet's words could have been challenged, but she didn't. She lived a happy marriage. She never complained about her marriage. She was happy with the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him.